Welcome to the first video in my acoustic guitar build series. This is actually my first acoustic guitar build. I've built plenty of electric guitars over the years. I've serviced lots of guitars, both electric and acoustic over the years. But I've always looked at the acoustic guitar as something you maybe needed to spend an entire lifetime building until you got good. And I've noticed, uh, first I, I rub elbows with a lot of guitar builders because I sell guitar tools to a lot of them. And I've also watched several series here on YouTube of other people building their first acoustic guitar or maybe their 50th acoustic guitar. And guys like Chris and Matt over at Driftwood, uh, Jeff at Home Built Workshop, Eric at Eric Schaefer Guitars, uh, Robbie O'Brien and O'Brien Guitars, all of those people have inspired me to say, hey, look, it's not rocket science to do it. Yes, there's a lot of detail. Yes, you have to do things accurately, but it is a totally attainable thing to build your first acoustic guitar. So that's what I'm doing. I've got a couple Ovang call boards here that I'm going to be using for backs and sides. I've got them marked out uh, into little wood chunks here of where I'm gonna take my backs, where I'm gonna take my sides. I've got more backs here. This is an inch thick material. I'm going to resaw it right at uh, 0.25 inches, so a quarter of an inch. So I should get four slices out of each chunk, uh, which means two guitars, since everything's left and right book matched, so to speak. Uh, I've got some pretty wood down here that's got some sap wood in it. I've got some fairly ugly stuff with some inclusions and bad grain patterns. Those are going to be my practice pieces. I know this is going to be my first time using a side bender. This is going to be my first time gluing back plates together. I'm going to make some mistakes, or at least I'm planning to. And I wanted to make sure that I've got plenty of material to make those mistakes and still recover. Uh, when I feel comfortable, I'll use some of the nicer pieces to start uh, second, third, fourth, fifth guitars out of Ovang Call. But today's uh, big process that I need to get is to chunk these pieces out and get them re -sawed. So that's what we're going to do. I've got all my blanks lined up. I've got them marked with a V so that I can put the book matches together <laughs> if I ever get confused. But I've got them sitting here um, with all of the glue rip sides down and all of the planed or sanded faces to the left so that I can just pull them off the stack and stick them through the saw as they go.
successfully got a bunch of pieces <laughs> of wood cut and a bunch of sets here. So this one is kind of the, the neutral one. There's nothing super special about it, but it does look nice, nice and straight grain. Um, could be interesting either way. And the second, second set is very similar. Just nice looking. This is the, the one, the practice set with the big bullseye and as predicted, <laughs> big bullseye in the center. That's okay, that, that one's gonna just be used for practice. And then this set here is the one with the sap wood on it and it's gonna look super nice. There is a little cathedral happening, but it's just right here at the edge, how it patterns out. I might move that whole pattern a little bit south on here, but the sap wood came out right where I wanted it to, both sets. That's gonna be a pretty couple guitars right there. Then the sides, similarly, this was kind of the junk set with the imperfection kind of going down the middle of it. Uh, still kind of cool looking, but it'll be really good practice for bending sides. Then uh, this set here, really nice straight grain. So that'll be two really, really nice sets there. And then last but not least, this is the side set with a little bit of sapwood in it. You can see it right, right at the end there, hopefully, if that's in the camera. Both sets have that one more pronounced than the other. So and now it's time to run everything through the drum sander and just find out if all the pieces are thick enough to actually make the pieces we want out of them. Chris from Driftwood suggested this machine. It's a Powermatic. 2244. I picked it up here at the end of 2021. This is a wonderful sander if you're looking to step up from like a Delta or one of the kind of consumer end belt sanders. This one is far superior to that, but we're going to run all our pieces through this one. Well, here we are. Uh, we've got all the sets sanded and put back in their book match order. This is that cathedraled piece, little hole in it right there, but it'll be good for practicing side bending <laughs> to learn where the limits are and how fast and how slow and all that kind of stuff. So we got two sets there. This set is pretty nice, uh, just straight grained, but the color in there, and I don't know if that's gonna come through on the camera or not, but a lot of variation, kind of a reddish brown to very yellow to almost a little green in there. I have a feeling when we get some finish on that, it's gonna be pretty cool looking. There's one little like limb that you can see coming through that piece, but nothing terrible there. And then this piece here is the one with a little bit of sapwood in it. And this is probably even more color. So it goes from that sapwood to a real reddish brown and then some yellows and greenish browns in there. But that set came out just, these two sets came out just wonderful. This one, this one's just awesome. The, the texture and the grain there. And I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's actually a little bit of figuring in this as well. Uh, that I didn't see until I sanded them out and it looks really cool. So again, the bullseye here, a couple sets with the bullseye, nothing to write home about there. But then this straight grain piece, pretty nice set right there. And again, some variation 
in the color and the hues that are in there. Really nice, both sets. And then lastly, the, uh, the last two sapwood sets, and that's going to make just some gorgeous backs right there. Again, these cathedral pieces on the sides, I don't think will just capture the edge of those. Reddish, yellows, greens in there. And then the last set right there. So two very similar guitars will come out of that one. That will do it for the first video in our acoustic build series. The more I think about this guitar or these guitars, the more excited I get. I just, you know, had it in my mind that it was unattainable. I think it's totally going to be attainable. I don't think my first one is going to be a work of art. I think it's going to be a good guitar, but I'll definitely be looking for notes on how to make the second, third, and fourth ones better. And that's what this whole thing is all about. So hopefully processing all the lumber wasn't too boring for everybody. It's a necessary part of building any guitar, whether it's acoustic or electric. So it's always good to see how other people do it. I always pick up a few tips when I get to watch over somebody's shoulder in the shop. So that is it for now. Thanks for joining me. I hope you'll catch the next one. Until then, take care, everybody. If you would like more guitar-related content, click that subscribe button. If you want to follow the rest of this build, click the playlist to the right. And as always, visit SkyscraperGuitars.com for guitar tools and accessories.